So you're here because you're trying to figure out whether the CNA, LVN slash LPN, or RN program are best for you. You don't want to spend a bunch of your time and especially a bunch of your money getting into one of these programs and then figuring out that this is not what you love. So you're here to figure out the role, essentially what each of these roles is allowed to do and not allowed to do. You're here to figure out what the education time and cost it takes to invest to become one of these roles. You also want to know the salary, of course, who doesn't? And you want to also figure out the career growth. Now, at the very end of this video, I will be talking about some of the more juicy components, such as the social perception. What does society actually think of each of these roles? Because believe it or not, for some people, this will be a big factor in determining which of these roles they decide to go with. Now, let's talk about some of the specifics for each of these roles. So the CNA, let's talk about first what you need in terms of time and money investment to become a CNA. So to become a CNA, you usually only need like a high school diploma, GED, to get into the program. The program typically is going to last anywhere from like a month for the accelerated programs up to maybe about three months. Now, in terms of money investment to get into these programs, or actually I should say to pay these programs, is going to be anywhere from like $500 to $2,000. And that's on average. Again, depends on the state. Now, in terms of your career salary at the very beginning, again, the more years you work, the more you might make. But in the early starting of the career, you can expect to make anywhere from thirty to $40,000. Not bad to start off with, with such a short amount of time investment and money investment. Now let's talk about what CNAs do and don't do, because you want to know essentially what I might expect if I do become a CNA. Well, CNAs do a lot of the basic care in terms of helping with things like daily living activities, toileting, bathing, things like that. They also help take vital signs. So they will take vital signs for the patient, blood pressure, temperature, all of that good stuff. They will help reposition patient, moving patients, walking patients. They do a lot of that stuff. And they also do a lot of reporting to the nurses, which if you are looking to become a CNA, then an RN or LVN, LPN leader, this is also a good way for you to start to observe what these other roles do. If you do have physical conditions that don't allow you to be physically active or to move heavy patients, this might not be the role for you. You will be very, very physically demanded in this job. The other thing is that CNAs do not give medications, injections. They don't do much documentation, maybe just the vital signs and how much a patient drank or urinated, but they don't work independently. They are always under the supervision of like a higher nurse. So you do have to report to those higher positions when you are a CNA. Lastly, let's talk about career growth. So in terms of career growth, first of all, CNAs work in a lot of different settings, but most of the time we tend to see them in the hospital setting and skilled nursing facilities, but they can be everywhere. CNAs, in terms of career growth, there's not much career growth, unfortunately, for CNAs. You do get paid more the longer you work, but this is often seen as a stepping stone for a lot of people who want to become nurses later on. For career growth, this might not be the best role if you're looking to advance as a CNA. That's it. CNA is a CNA. If you want to become something else, then you have to go again to the nursing program in terms of LVN, LPN, or RN programs. Next, let's look at the LVN, LPN programs. So I know I keep saying LVN, LPN. The reason I keep saying this is because LVN, LPN is the exact same thing. It's just that in some states, they're known as LVNs, and in other states, they're known as LPN. So that's that. Now, LVN, LPNs, in terms of your investment, this is more so the middle ground. So the investment is a little bit more than the CNA, but it's less than the RN. So LVN, LPNs are going to expect to invest about 12 months being in the nursing program. The other thing is that their investment in terms of money is going to be more like the five to 10, no, more like five to 15,000 in terms of the range, the average range. So they do expect to invest a good amount of time and a good amount of money, but it's not going to be as much as with the RN program. So if you're looking to get your nursing license, your LPN, LVN license, and you don't want to spend two years in school and you don't want to invest that much money, then the LPN program, L LPN, LVN program might be the best for you. The thing though with the LPN, LVN program is that you don't make as much money as the RN. You make more than a CNA, but not as much as the RN. So with the LPN, LVN program, do you expect to make anywhere between 50 and 60,000 a year? And again, that's on average, this is going to be the beginning salary. With your LPN, LVN, now you just want to know essentially what do I do in that role? Do I want to do that role? Is it worth that time investment, that money investment, and how much I will expect to make? Well, let's talk about it. So your LVN LPN has a lot of the roles of your 
RN and a lot of the roles of your CNA. So you do a lot of nursing care, but not as intense as an RN. So what I mean by that is that they can do PO medications, oral medications. They can do injectable medications like uh, intramuscular. They can do subcutaneous. They cannot do a lot of the IV push medications. That's where you got the syringe and you like push it in. They can hang IVs though. For example, antibiotics, that's okay to do. They don't do blood products though. That is not something that is under the scope of practice of LPN, LVNs. In terms of assessment, they do more so what we call focused assessments where maybe they look at a wound, they treat a wound and they assess that wound, but they're not gonna go more in depth in terms of creating a care plan. That is not something LPN, LVNs do. They don't make care plans. They can assess the long sounds and write about it, but again, no care plans. They will also be able to do some basic documentation and any big reports need to be given to the RN because LVN LPNs often work under the supervision of an RN. Next, I wanna talk about the settings that they work in. So this is gonna go into the career advancement. So the career growth. So in terms of the settings that LP and LVNs work in, it's more going to be the long-term care facilities. So if you're looking for career growth, consider that the specialty of LP and LVN is not really going to be in the hospital setting. It's going to be more so in the long-term care facilities, like skilled nursing facilities. This means that your career growth is going to be limited in terms of where you can work and how much you can grow. LVNs do not, LVN LPNs do not get that BSN, MSN furthering education. So if you're an LVN, that's about it. You get stuck in that LVN role. That's not a bad thing. I just want you to make sure that you know this is where you are stuck. You're stuck in that LVN position and you don't really have that choice to advance unless you go back to school and you become an RN through during the nursing program and all of the other classes that are required of you. Now, LVNs do also have the advancement of getting a bridge program, which is really awesome. That means that you're an LVN and instead of spending two whole years doing the RN program, you would instead do maybe one year because you're already an LVN. So we do expect you to already know a lot of the things. So then we would put you into a bridge program where you do less time in school and of course then spend less money on your education to become an RN. So if you're looking to get a more middle ground position where maybe you're not doing so much of the hard physical work and getting paid less like a CNA, which again, not a bad thing. And maybe you're not into getting more responsibility than like an RN, then maybe the LPN LVN role will be right for you. Lastly, let's mention registered nurses, RNs. So RNs are gonna be the ones who require the most time and money investment and education, pre-qualifications, all of that to become registered nurses. It takes about two years to become an RN. Again, we're talking about ADN. I'm not gonna focus on BSN and those furthering careers, just your associate degree as an RN. It takes a two year, it's a two year program. And in terms of how much it costs, well, it really varies. It's gonna vary a lot by state, but most programs are gonna cost on average 6,000 to 30,000. That's a lot. So actually I have heard of some students who pay upwards of close to hundreds of thousands. So just keep that in mind. And that's if you go private. We're talking on average. And again, this is on average, including private and non-private. Now. The other thing to keep in mind in terms of investment is they do require a lot more qualifications. So you need to get a lot of prerequisites, a lot of your anatomy, physiology, microbiology, before you can even get into the RN program. So yes, the program is two years, but before you can even do the program, do expect to do at least two, three years of other classes in order to even get into the program. So it is a lot of investment. The next thing that people really care about in terms of RNs is, again, we're talking ADN and in the beginning of the career is the salary. The salary is gonna be more 65 to $85,000 annual salary. And this is of course gonna vary by state, but we're not focusing on that, we're averaging. So this sounds great, right? It's like, oh, I do two years of school and I start making like really good money. The problem is that people don't realize the amount of investment that is required to become an RN. It's not like you graduate high school and then, oh, let me just get into the RN program. No, there are a lot of qualifications, pre-qualifications, prerequisites that you have to have before you can get in there. And the other thing with the RN role is what you are and are not allowed to do. So your scope of practice essentially. So within your scope of practice, you have the highest ability to do the widest range of tasks and skills than the other out of the all three roles. But with that comes a lot of responsibility. So 
let's talk about what RNs do. So RNs do the medications. They can give all types of medication. Of course, maybe not like the oncology ones that require even further uh, certification, but they do all types of uh, medications. That's going to be IV push, IV, uh, IM, sub Q, all of them. So RNs can do all types of medications. They can also create and manage care plans, which is something that we said LVN LPNs cannot do. RNs are also going to be responsible for the more comprehensive assessments. So they do the more head to toe assessments, the mental status of the patient. They're going to be focusing on more in depth assessments than the LVN LPN is going to do. They also work on a lot of the educational aspects. That's something that LVN LPN we said can't do. So LVN LPN can do some like reinforcement of education, but the RN is the one that's expected to do the initial education and the main education. So they're going to be doing the education with discharge when a patient leaves, teaching them about the medications and about what is expected of them to do once they are at home. Essentially, the only thing that RNs aren't really allowed to do is prescribe medications. So that's going to be more so something that you would need further qualification. Like you would be, you would have to become a nurse practitioner or get your doctorate or get some sort of specific education beyond your associate degree to actually be able to prescribe medication under the supervision of a doctor. But that's essentially the main thing I would say that nurses are not allowed, allowed to do, not allowed to prescribe medications and not allowed to diagnose in terms of medical diagnosis. So we are not allowed to diagnose and say, Hey, this patient has hepatitis. No, instead we would have to do a nursing diagnosis where we would have to say something like inability and tolerance to ineffective, you know, all of those nursing diagnoses in terms of the RN role, there are a lot more possibilities and a lot more expectations. So keep that in mind. The other thing that is going to be a big factor for RNs is considering that RNs work essentially everywhere. And that's fantastic because on to my next point, RNs in terms of career growth have the most possibilities out of all three roles. Not only can you go from RN, your associate ADN, but you can get your BSN, MSN, and even go into your doctorate programs. The other thing is that you have ability to work, like I said, almost anywhere. There's the NICU, ER, there's out of the hospital, in the hospital. You can become an educator like I am. There are so many roles. The other thing is that as an RN, you do also have the possibility to grow and expand into non-nursing bedside roles. That is, it is a lot easier to do that because you will have those years of experience working as an RN. So you can easily become maybe like a case manager. That is something that these other roles do not have. So if you want to leave bedside, you even have more opportunity like education, case management, all of these other roles. Now let's get to the juicy part. What does society and what do other healthcare workers really think about each of these roles? Let's start with what all three of them are essentially seen as in society. They are all seen as very respectable roles, though some more than others, we'll get to that. And they're all seen as very trustworthy roles. All healthcare fields essentially are seen as very trustworthy roles, people that you can trust, which is fantastic. But let's get into the more in-depth for each of the roles. So let's start with CNAs. CNAs are such a crucial and hardworking component in the healthcare field. However, according to society, they are only seen as entry-level jobs and therefore do not get the respect that they deserve. They are a very valuable profession, but society might not see them as important and may not even understand what CNAs do. And that's why they don't give that importance to that role. If you are looking to be in a profession that is very high value in terms of how society views you, then CNA might not be the role for you. It is easy to get in, easy to start making income, but if this is something that affects you, then maybe this might not be the first choice for you to take. Next, let's look at LVN LPNs. So LVN LPNs are often seen by society as not being real nurses. I know, crazy, they are real nurses, but because they don't have that same level of education, because they don't have that same le level of qualifications, and essentially their role doesn't have as much scope of practice, they are not often seen as real nurses. So the social stigma for LVN, LPN might be something that affects you. The other thing is that because they are not often seen in the hospital settings where a lot of people end up going, LVN, LPNs are also not a role that is clearly understood. So they're not sure if you're a nurse or what kind of nurse you really are. So that is another aspect that the social environment doesn't really understand and therefore can't really put a nice high qualification to it. And lastly, let's talk about the RN role. So the RN role is often seen as the face of nursing. This is the 
face that many people see in the hospital setting, and therefore it is the one that most pe most people in society are very familiar with. RNs are seen as very highly regarded, and they get the highest status out of all of these three roles. However, because you are an RN, society does expect a lot from you. You have the high qualifications and the education level. Therefore, society expects you to know everything, which I mean, we can't know everything if we're RNs, but society thinks, oh, you're an RN. You must know everything about cancer, about pediatrics, about maternity. And you will have people who ask you about all of these different specialties that might not be your specialty. The other thing is that because you are the overseer, of the LPN, LVN, and RN, you do get that leadership role. So people see you as a leader. If this is something that you're not fond of, if you don't want to be seen as a leader, if you don't want to have those uh, highly regarded roles where you're expected to have these high qualifications, then maybe the RN role isn't for you. And that is something else that you need to consider. So I want to end this video by saying that no matter which role you choose, all roles are very important. All roles are crucial and it doesn't really matter what social stigma says. It matters how you feel about this role, how this role fits you. If it meets your goals, what is your goal? Is your goal to graduate and get to work early because you need the income? Do you want to further your career advancement? Do you not have the income right now to go into the more like RN, uh, BSN programs? What is your goal? And that's all that matters. The other thing that really matters is how you show up to work once you are one of these roles. I don't care if you're the doctor. I don't care if you're the maintenance worker. How you show up is going to be what's most important. If you are a jerk when you come into the hospital setting, I don't care what your title is. Your title to me is going to be a jerk. So that is going to be the most important thing. What is going to be individualized to your goals and how you show up once you are one of these roles. That is the most important thing. No matter which role you choose, you are valuable, you are important, and you are very well respected in my eyes and many others. So if you are interested in becoming a CNA, LVN, LPN, RN, go ahead and check out my other videos. I do talk about these roles more in depth and how to help you get into some of these roles. I also help a lot of new nursing students with the educational aspect of the nursing program on how to study and how to understand these more complex topics like fluid and electrolytes and arterial blood gases, dosage calculations, all of that good stuff. If you want to see these videos, go ahead and check out my channel and I will see you there.